السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین ہو و نستا غفر و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیعات اعمالنا من یہدہ اللہ فلا مدل اللہ و من یدلل فلا ہادی اللہ و اشہد اللہ الہ الا اللہ وحدہ لا شریک اللہ و اشہد ان محمد عبدہ رسول اما بعد فعین خیر الحدیث کتاب اللہ و خیر الحدی حدی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و شر العمور محدثاتہ و کل محدثۃ بدا و کل بدعۃ دلالا و کل دلالۃ فی النار مائی ڈیئر برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز آئی ویلکم یو ان ٹو آر نیو پروگرام اینڈ اسلامک کورس اسٹرانگ فاؤنڈیشنس ان دس پروگرام اٹ از آر ایفرٹ ٹو انشا اللہ پریزنٹ دا موسٹ امپارٹنٹ دا موسٹ فنڈامنٹل دا موسٹ بیسک اسلامک سبجیکٹس ان اے ویری سمپل اینڈ ایزی مینر ان اے اسٹیپ بائی اسٹیپ وے You can inshallah not only understand but even inshallah memorize these topics. We start with the fundamental and the most important subject and that is the importance of seeking knowledge. As we know, my dear brothers and sisters, it is common to find that a person is a Muslim but he doesn't have knowledge about Islam. Many people say, oh we are better off being ignorant. And some people say that if we get knowledge, we have to answer allah if we don't have knowledge we will say allah we don't have knowledge and so we can save ourselves by giving this excuse of being ignorant some people say too much knowledge is not good if we get too much knowledge a person's mind will go crazy so these are some of the reasons why people stay away from seeking knowledge we find allah has invited in the quran the entire humanity When Allah has said in Surah Ibrahim, Surah 14, verse 52, balagul linnas. Here is a message for all of mankind. And Allah has said in the Quran, in Surah Qamar, Surah 54, verses 17, 22, 32, and 44 places, I have made the Quran easy for you to understand and remember. Then who will receive the message? So my brothers and sisters, let us look at these questions face to face. And I have divided today's subject into four parts. In the first part, inshallah, we will look at these obstacles. The obstacles which stop a person from seeking knowledge. When we are talking of the importance of seeking knowledge, how can we go ahead with the importance without clearing out these obstacles? So all of these four subjects which we are going to look at inshallah, each have four points. Let us start with the first, clearing obstacles. We start with the first question and the first question is, that we are better off being ignorant. People say this and believe in it and that is one reason why so many people, they are ignorant about Islam. This is only for Islam, this is not for worldly matters. In worldly matters, if you say to someone, oh, you are ignorant, so they will feel bad. Even a person who is really ignorant will feel bad that you call me ignorant. But when it comes to religion, when it comes to Islam, so people feel that oh, we are better off being ignorant. Is it so? Let us look at the answer. It's in Surah Baqara. Surah 2, verse 67. Allah Rabbul Alameen has said that Musa alayhi salam said to Bani Israel, A'udhu billahi anakuna min al-jahileen. I seek Allah's refuge that I should not be from the ignorant, from the jahileen. Now Musa alayhi salam sought Allah's refuge and this is an answer to the question. The answer is that Islam has taught us to seek refuge of Allah from being ignorant. So being ignorant is not something good in Islam. On the contrary, it's something bad in Islam. And it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Naam, Surah number 6, verse number 35. Never be from the ignorant. So being ignorant in Islam is something bad. Being knowledgeable is something good. My brothers and sisters, come be with us. We need to solve this problem of ignorance. And I want to invite you that we all together, inshallah, can work to solve this ignorance by answering these questions. So the next time you hear someone say that I am better off being ignorant, we should say, A'udhu Billahi. Come on, repeat with me. A'udhu Billahi an akuna min al-jahileen. Surah Baqarah, Surah 2, verse number 67. I seek Allah's refuge from being from those who are ignorant. This is the answer to the first question. The second question. People say, too much knowledge is not good. We should have little bit knowledge. Don't go deep. Be on the surface. Little bit knowledge is good. Too much knowledge is bad. It can make a person go crazy. 
Is it true? Is it true? We can find the answer in the Quran in Surah Taha, Surah number 20, verse number 114. And inshallah, I believe most of you will know this verse of the Quran already by heart. So it's very easy for you to answer this question. This verse Allah has said, وَقُلْ رَبِّي زِدْنِي إِلْمَا And say, Rabbi, O oh my Lord, zidni ilma, increase me in knowledge. O oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So if increase in knowledge is bad, if too much knowledge is bad, if too much knowledge is going to make a person go crazy, then why did Allah Rabbul Alameen teach us to seek knowledge? Teach us to ask for an increase in knowledge. We would have asked oh Allah, give me a little bit knowledge. Don't give me too much knowledge. But we have been taught, Rabbi Zidni Ilma, Oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So increase in knowledge is good. And do you know, who was the first person who read this dua in this ummah? It was our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the first person who read this dua, Rabbi Zidni Ilma. And he was the most knowledgeable of this ummah. So we get to know, if you are the most knowledgeable person, in whichever place you are, whichever country you are, maybe in the whole world, you have to yet say, Rabbi Zidni Ilma. Oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So increase in knowledge is good. It's good. And that is the reason we have been taught to ask for an increase in knowledge. And do you know, my dear brothers and sisters, this is a proof of the truth of Islam. Because Islam is the religion of truth. Here, when you get more knowledge, your Iman increases more. Your desire for amal increases more. In systems of falsehood, leaders stop their people from seeking too much knowledge. Don't go deep. No, no. You know why? If people go deep, they get to know all the wrong things. So it's important to stop them. But Islam has taught us, Rabbi Zidni Ilma, Oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So this is the answer to the second question. The third question. When people say, if we get knowledge, we have to answer Allah. If we don't have knowledge, we can tell Allah, Oh Allah, I was ignorant. And this will help us to save ourselves. Is it true? Is it true? As if a person says it is the time for azan. Now if I listen to the azan, I will have to go for salah. So I'll just close my ears and sit with my ears properly closed so that I cannot hear the azan. But does this stop? A person from the responsibility of salah. It is as if a person is not sleeping. He's just closing his eyes. How much ever you wake him up, he's not going to wake up because he's not sleeping at all. Are we fooling ourselves by saying this? Let us look at the answer and I encourage you and invite you. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Learn this verse of the Quran. Inshallah, you can also answer this question. Allah has said in the Quran in Surah Mulk, Surah 67, verse number 10. Allah says that people of Jahannam, they will say, if we would have heard, if we would have heard, and if we would have thought about it, thought about it, use the intelligence, we would not be in this burning fire. There are people today who say, I don't even want to hear about it. Don't even talk. I don't want to listen. So the people of Jahannam are saying, I wish we would have heard. Some people say, I've heard, but I'm not going to think about this. But they are saying, if we would have thought about it, if we would have heard, if we would have thought about it, we would not be in the burning fire. Meaning, they used to not listen. They used to not think. Meaning, they used to not acquire knowledge. They didn't have knowledge. They never heard. They never thought about it. They didn't have knowledge. They were jail. They were ignorant. Where are they? They're in the fire. Are they safe? This is delusion. People who think, that we can save ourselves by being ignorant deliberately. Allah Mustaan, this is something which is a fake. This is falsehood, which is only going to deceive ourselves. It's not going to change the reality. The reality is, Allah has given you a mind to think. Why? Think about it. For what? The biggest and the most important thing is what? So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the answer to the third question. And the fourth question, which is very important today. Some people say knowledge is engineering, medicine, Management, computers, academics, this is knowledge. We are not stopping you from seeking knowledge of computers, of medicine, of academics, of engineering, no problem. 
But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. It's mentioned in Sunan Ibn Majah with the authentic chain of narration. He taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ask Allah for beneficial knowledge. وَتَعْوَذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنِ الْمِنْلَا يَنْفَى And seek Allah's refuge from knowledge which is not of benefit, which is not beneficial. So all beneficial knowledge we have been encouraged to seek. Whether it's knowledge of medicine, engineering, science, academics, anything which is beneficial, it is for us to seek. We have been encouraged to seek knowledge. But, which is the most important knowledge? Because if a person becomes a doctor, he becomes an engineer, how much he can benefit? If, for example, after his degree, he starts working, he will live possibly 60 years. He will retire after 60, 65, maybe. How many years? 50 years? 50 years after studies, there's a benefit of 50 years. Now the knowledge of the Akhirah, the knowledge about Allah, the knowledge about our purpose of life, the knowledge about Islam, it's going to help us in our real life to come. And that real life is Akhirah. It is also going to help us in this world, in these 50, 60, or whatever years we're going to live, to get excellence, to reach the peak, to reach the heights. And this has happened in the past. But this is not the main goal. The knowledge of Islam takes a person to success and the real success is the success of Akhirah. And we are not talking of 50 years. We are not talking of 500 years. Are we talking of 5,000 years? No. We are talking of 50,000 years? No. Are we talking of 500,000 years? No. Are we talking of 50 lakh years? 5 million years? No. Are we talking of 50 million years? No. Are we talking of 1 billion years? 5 billion years? No. We're talking of billions and billions and billions of years of life, forever and forever and forever. This knowledge is going to help us. Are we seeking this knowledge? Why? How can we stay ignorant? How can we stay away from knowledge? My brothers and sisters, this is the answer to the question. That seek knowledge which is beneficial. So if a person is a PhD, he's a doctor, he's a scientist, he's a researcher, but he doesn't know his purpose of life. He doesn't know his creator. He doesn't know why he's living in this world. He doesn't know where he's going to go from here. He doesn't know who has created him. He does not know the purpose of his life. Then that person has missed out the biggest and the most beneficial thing. And in that sense, he is ignorant. So my brothers and sisters, these are the answers to these four questions. Now we move on to the second section of today's program. And this is the importance of seeking knowledge. I want to share with you four very fundamental and basic reasons and reasons which you can tell yourself inshallah and such reasons which help us to remember inshallah so we look at the first reason we start with the first reason and this is the first wahi the first revelation which was sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran surah number 96 verses 1 to 5 my dear brothers and sisters let us look at the background the background is the whole world was in darkness the whole world was full with wrong and evil things. In the Arab lands where Prophet Muhammad was sent, among the Arabs, we find there were lots of wrong practices. There was alcohol, there was fornication and adultery, there was gambling, there was idol worship. But the very first revelation was Iqra Bismi Rabbika Read in the name of your Lord who has created. Who has created man from a clot of congealed blood, from a leech like substance? Read, your Lord is most bountiful. He who taught by the pen. Who taught man that which he knew not. In these first five verses, the word Iqra is present in two places which says read the very first five verses which come after a long period of time after Isa al-Islam there is a period of time after which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has come as the messenger of Allah and the very first revelation is Iqra the very first five verses they contain the word Allama Allama which means Allah taught Allama has been mentioned two places the word Qalam pen has been mentioned we find the first five verses are about Iqra about reading, about acquiring knowledge. Do you know why? When a person seeks knowledge, the truth and falsehood come in front of him. And it is for him to see and decide and accept and acknowledge the truth. And the truth is so powerful that Allah Rabbul Alameen has said, 
that the clear, the correct path is very clear from the wrong path. And Surah Al-Isra, Surah 17, verse 81, it is mentioned, وَقُلْ جَعَلْ حَقْ وَزَحَقَ الْبَاطِلِ Say the truth has arrived and the falsehood has perished. So my brothers and sisters, the truth is strong. And this is the truth. But you can know the truth when you seek knowledge. If you don't seek knowledge, it's all darkness. So this is the first point about the importance of seeking knowledge. I encourage you to memorize this, inshallah, as we speak today. This is the first point. The second point, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said in a hadith recorded in Sahih Bukhari, Kitab al Ilm, he said, bihi khairan. If Allah intends good for a person, you faqihu fi deen. Allah gives him understanding of religion. Understanding of religion is a sign of goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah intends good for a person, He gives him you faqihu fi deen. Now, what is our perception today? What is our understanding today? People say that this person has wealth, he has power, he has a good car, he has good furniture, he has good looks. No, these are not signs of goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sign of real goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you faqihu fi deen, is understanding of religion. And this understanding of religion is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends good for. So my brothers and sisters, let us seek this goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know why? Our wealth will stay in this world. But our knowledge will help us to take the right decisions. Our knowledge will help us to know right and wrong. What is that Allah ta'ala loves? And what is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates? What is it that will make us fail? And what is it that will make us succeed? My dear brothers and sisters, so yufaqihu fi deen, understanding of religion, is a sign of goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our point number two. Our point number three is an amazing hadith from Mustadrak Hakim and which has been graded Sahih in Sahih al jami Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Fadlul ilmi ahabu ilayya min fadl al Increase in ilm, knowledge, is more beloved to me than increase in ibadah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I prefer a person increases more in knowledge. Increase in knowledge is more beloved to me. Ahabu ilayya mean fadl il ibadah than increase in ibadah. Now when we talk of this, let us know that ibadah, there is farz ibadah, which as it is people have to do. Farz ibadah, everyone has to do. There is no question of not doing farz ibadah. We are talking of nafil ibadah. We are talking of the nawafil, which are extra. So if a person was to increase in nawafil ibadah, the Prophet wasallam said, I'd rather prefer that you increase in ilm. Do you know why? There's a reason. If a person has a great jazba for ibadah, but he doesn't have knowledge, how wise was Umar bin Abdul Aziz? He said, Kana ma yufsidu aktharam ma yuslihu. He will cause more fasad than doing good. For ibadah to be accepted, it should be with good intention, it should be according to the teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are so many people who do things in ibadah which are not proven from the Quran and the Sunnah, and I wish they would have known that before Allah subhanahu wa taala, only those actions are going to be accepted which are according to the example of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, my dear brothers and sisters, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam showed us where to focus is to focus more on the increase in knowledge. And do you know, increase in ilm is also an ibadah. In fact, people think that this is something extra. But our Prophet ﷺ taught us, and that is our point number four, a hadith recorded in Ibn Majah with an authentic chain of narration. He taught us, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. Seeking knowledge is compulsory, is compulsory on every single Muslim. Every single Muslim seeking knowledge is faridatun, farz. He did not say, it is extra, it is nawafil, it is from the good deeds, which if you do, it is good, you don't do, it is good. No, he did not say that. He said, faridatun ala kulli muslim, it's compulsory, it's compulsory. This is an ibadah, which is compulsory, about which the very first wahi of the Quran was of iqra, of seeking knowledge. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us look at the problem around us. There are so many people who do actions of shirk, actions of associating partners with Allah, out of the love of Allah. Why? They don't have knowledge. There are so many people who do such actions which are not proven from Prophet Muhammad as ibadah which he said 
فَهُوَ رَدْ It is rejected out of the love of the Prophet. Out of the love of the Prophet, people do such actions which are not proven. Do you know why? They don't have knowledge. There are so many people who deal in riba, interest, which is haram. So severely haram that Allah has declared war on those people who deal in riba. But they deal in riba and they don't even know they're dealing in riba because riba today many a times comes with names which are other than the original name. By changing its name, it comes in disguise. So my brothers and sisters, there are so many people who cannot recognize riba when it comes in front of them and they're dealing in riba and they don't even know they're dealing in riba. There are so many people who do haram things because they don't know it's haram. There are so many people who fall in so many such potholes because they don't even know it's there. Ilm helps us to see. Ilm gives us knowledge. And this should be with the first kalima. The kalima which we read. Allah said in Surah Muhammad, Surah 47 verse number 19, Seek ilm. Get knowledge that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. We should get knowledge about La ilaha illallah. So now La ilaha illallah, we say La ilaha illallah, but we should get ilm. What is La ilaha illallah? So my brothers and sisters, I encourage you that we should seek knowledge. These are four reasons. I hope you are ready for this. Let's go on to the third section. In this third section, I want to share with you four beautiful ahadith from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi which talk about the reward of walking on the path of seeking knowledge. And what is the reward in the effort that a person does in seeking knowledge? For example, if a child is under an apple tree and he throws a pebble to get an apple and he continues to throw, he has not got an apple until he doesn't get the aim right, until the apple doesn't fall. He has not got anything in his hand. But when a person seeks knowledge, the day he starts walking, the first step that he takes, the first intention which he makes, the first efforts that he puts in, he starts getting reward. The first hadith about this is a hadith from Sahih Muslim. Kitab al-Dhikr, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman sahala lahu lahu bihi tariqan ila al-jannah. The one, the person who walks on the path of seeking knowledge, Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman to seek knowledge, sahala lahu lahu bihi tariqan ila al-jannah. Allah will make the path to jannah Easy for him due to it. Due to this walking on the path of seeking knowledge, Allah will make the path to Jannah easy for him. Tariqan ila Jannah, the path to Jannah, Suratul Mustaqim, will become easy for him. Do you know? There are so many people who say, I know the path to Jannah. I know this is the right thing. I know this is right. I know that is wrong. But it, this is so difficult. So that is the reason people don't do. Waking up for Fajr. Looks difficult. Eating only halal, avoiding haram is difficult. But Allah's Rasul Muhammad وسلم, has said, when a person walks on the path of seeking knowledge, the path to Jannah will become easy for him. And do you know why is it difficult? We have our enemy, Shaitan, who's waiting on the Siratul Mustaqim. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Araf, Surah 7, verse 16 and 17. He said, La aqudanna lahum siratakal mustaqim. O oh Allah, I will wait for them on your straight way. On your Suratul Mustaqim, I will wait for them. So Shaitan, Iblis, our enemy, is waiting on the Suratul Mustaqim. Then I will attack them from the front. From behind. From their right. From their left. And most of them, you will find them to be ungrateful. So he is there on the Suratul Mustaqim, and that is the reason why people find it difficult to walk on the Suratul Mustaqim. But this way, the way the Suratul Mustaqim, the way to Jannah, will become easy for the person who walks on the path of seeking knowledge. The person who walks on the path to seek knowledge, the path to Jannah will become easy for him. Subhanallah. It's so good. My brothers and sisters, ask yourself you want the path to Jannah to be easy for you? Or do you want it to be difficult? If you want it easy, seek knowledge and continuously seek knowledge. Some people, they seek knowledge. If there's a program, there's a conference once a year, they go in such a conference, once a year they become students of knowledge. So once a year, the path to Jannah becomes easy for them. Some people say, no, 
every month. They go for this monthly program. So once a month, the path to Jannah becomes easy for them. And there are people who say, no, every week. So every week, there's a Jummah Khutbah, there's a weekly program. They go in this, these kind of programs. There's a weekly lecture they listen and they seek knowledge once a week. So once a week, the path to Jannah becomes easy for them. But what do you want for yourself? Once a year? Once a month? Or once a week? And the correct answer is, every day. So we should seek knowledge every single day of our lives so that the path to Jannah continues to be easy for us. To the extent that some people say that the number of years we should seek knowledge is five years, six years. But if you think of it, you want the path to Jannah to be easy for five, six years, for seven, eight years in a madrasa. No, the path to Jannah should be easy for all throughout our life. You will find great scholars of Islam being students of knowledge. I'll give you an example. Imam Khatib Baghdadi, Rahimahullah, the great scholar who has written several books. One of his books, which is a famous book of Rijal, is Tariq al-Baghdad. Now, this one book itself is in 26 volumes. Such a big scholar. But when he died, people found a book was on his chest and he was reading before he died, seeking knowledge. The path to Jannah becomes easy. Every single day, we should seek knowledge. Not a single day of our life should go by without us learning something about Islam. My brothers and sisters, make this a goal in life. And this is the first point. And this is also an answer for those people who say, why you talk of ilm, ilm, ilm all the time? Talk of ibadah. Talk of amal. But when we see, when a person seeks knowledge, what happens? The desire for amal increases. The path to Jannah becomes easy and he walks towards Jannah, meaning he does actions which take him to Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters, Ilm is the master key to get Amal. I wish people knew about this. We come to point number second. And this is a beautiful hadith which has been recorded by Imam Ibn Abdul Bar in Sahih Al-Jame, hadith number 3913 and 3914. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The first part of the hadith is the same as what has already come. Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim. Seeking knowledge is compulsory on every single Muslim." Then he said, "Wa inna talibul ilmi yastaghfiru lahu kullu shayin hatta alhitan fil bahar." For the student of knowledge, every single thing, kullu shayin, every single thing seeks forgiveness. For the student of knowledge, hatta alhitan fil bahar, even the fish in the sea. It seeks forgiveness for the student of knowledge. Subhanallah. We find in our country, India, there is a system. When people part, they say, Dua me adakhna. Remember us in your prayers. We don't know how many people remember us in their prayers. But we find that kullu shayin, every single thing, all the creatures, they seek forgiveness for the student of knowledge. So if we seek knowledge, if we walk on the path of seeking knowledge, every single thing, the angels, the birds, the animals, every single thing is doing dua for us. That oh Allah forgive him. Oh Allah forgive him. Do you want this to happen? My brothers and sisters, do you want the path to Jannah to be easy? Do you want that all the creatures should seek forgiveness for us? Then walk on the path of seeking knowledge every single day, inshallah. Make an intention right now, inshallah. Make an intention. Point number three. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith recorded in Sunan Tirmidhi with authentic chain of narration. He said, Nadhar Allah humran. May Allah keep him hale and hearty. May Allah keep him well. Nadhara, the Arabic word Nadhara is very vast in its meaning. Nadhara, may Allah keep him in good condition. Who? Who? He said, Man sami aminna hadithan. Who hears a saying of mine. Who hears a hadith. A saying of mine. For Hafizahu. And memorizes it. Hatta yuballigahu gairahu until he tells it to someone else. First part, samia. Second part, hafiza. Memorize, memorize, memorize. You have to memorize. Come on, you have to memorize. Samia, you're already doing. You're already doing samia. Now memorize, we have to do. For hafizahu. Hatta yuballigahu gairahu until you make it read someone else. You tell this to someone else. So Prophet said, may Allah keep this person hale and hearty. May Allah keep him well. May Allah keep his face bright. This is included in the meaning of word Nogdora. Nogdora, may Allah keep him well. May Allah keep brightness on his face. May Allah keep him well. Well means what? Physically well. Mentally well. 
financially well. Well in this dunya, well in the akhira, well in the grave, well in the questioning, everything may Allah keep him well. Subhanallah, what a great meaning and what a great dua our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave to that person who samia listens to the sayings of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa memorizes them and passes it on to someone else. My dear brothers and sisters, let's remember this dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is point number three. Point number one, sahla lahu lahu bihi tariqan ilal jannah. The path to Jannah becomes easy. Point number two, kullu shayin, everything, does dua of forgiveness for the person who seeks knowledge. Number three, may Allah keep him well. Number four, point number four. And this is something which happens when we go for an Islamic program or for an Islamic dars where authentic knowledge from the Quran and the Sunnah is being shared. It's mentioned in Sahih Muslim Kitab al-Dhikr. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, وَمَجْتَمَا قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِّن بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ when people gather in a house from the houses of Allah, Yatluna Kitab Allah, to read the book of Allah. And for its dars, for its dars and for learnings from the Quran, and according to another hadith, for ilm, when they gather for the sake of ilm, for the sake of the Quran, for the sake of understanding the Quran. So Prophet said, Illa nazalat alayhimu sakina. On them, tranquility descends. Tranquility, sukoon, sakina descends on these people. People want sukoon. People are really troubled in life. They want sukoon in life. And do you know you get sukoon in Islamic knowledge? When you get Islamic knowledge, you get sukoon, alhamdulillah. You can feel it in your life, in part of your life. You can feel the sukoon. Even in difficulty, you are at ease, alhamdulillah. Illa nazalat alayhimu sakina. Sukoon, Sakina descends on them. Wa ghashiyat rahma. Allah's mercy covers them up. You can see a carpet covering up the floor. So the mercy of Allah covers them up. We all want mercy from Allah. And that mercy from Allah covers them up. Wa ghashiyat rahma. Wa haffatumul malaika. Angels surround them. Angels surround them. Do you know people? I'm from Bombay. I'll give you an example from here. If some film star is walking somewhere, so people come and surround. Oh, film star is passing from here. But the angels don't surround the film star. The angels surround the majalis, the gatherings of ilm. They come and surround the gathering of ilm. Hafatumul malaika, according to another hadith, one above the other, in a samai dunya, to the skies of this world. And the fourth thing is, wadakarahumullah fi man inda. Allah mentions them to those who are closest to him. So Allah Rabbul Alameen mentions, mentions. We are talking of Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of this world, the Lord of the Alameen mentions us before the angels. Look at so and so. He's there in this gathering. Allah Rabbul Alameen loves this. Why? Because now the plans of shaitan are going to fail. Because this person is now going to understand when he has come in a gathering of knowledge, this makes the path to Jannah easy. It is such a great honor that Allah Rabbul Alameen mentions us before the angels. See, imagine if the prime minister of the country, if a president of a country was to mention you, won't you be honored? Ah, oh, the prime minister mentioned about me in the parliament. But we are not talking about the prime minister. We are talking of the king of kings, Rabbul Alameen. He mentions them before the angels. These are the four things which happen in a gathering. And this is the fourth hadith we learn in this section. So my brothers and sisters, start walking. If you're not doing it already, start walking. Every single day, step by step, you have to go on because there is goodness in this. Allah has mentioned in the Quran in Surah Anam, Surah 6, verse 119. There are so many who misguide people. لَيُدِّلُّونَ بِأَهْوَائِهِمْ By their desires, بِغَيْرِ ilm Without knowledge. In this ayah, Allah has mentioned that there are many who misguide people by their desires, بِغَيْرِ ilm Without knowledge. Scholars have written in the tafsir of this verse that when a person gets knowledge, desires come under control. Due to knowledge, desires come under control. Because Allah has said, بِأَهْوَائِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ ilm Desires control a person when a person doesn't have knowledge. Knowledge helps, is a source of controlling desires. For example, I'll give you a worldly example. 
For example, a person has diabetes. Now he loves to eat sweet. But when he discovers, when he comes to know, when he gets the knowledge that he has diabetes, what happens? You will find such people developing great control all of a sudden. You love to eat sweets. It was irresistible for you. And now you're controlling yourself. How? It's that knowledge that I have diabetes. Now I have to control. If I don't control, I will have these, these problems. So this makes a person gets that control. Knowledge helps to control desires. When a person gets knowledge, it helps him to control desires. And this is also an answer for those people who say that why are you talking of knowledge? We are talking of knowledge because knowledge will help a person to control his desires and will help to overcome desires and will help a person to walk on the straight path. So my brothers and sisters, now we go on to the fourth section. The fourth section is the excellence of people of knowledge. My dear brothers and sisters, in the first section, we saw the obstacles which stop a person from seeking knowledge. We saw four questions and four answers. In the second section, we saw the importance of seeking knowledge. In the third section, we saw what is the reward when a person walks on the path of seeking knowledge. The path to Jannah becomes easy. All creation does dua for him. Allah keeps him hale and hearty and Allah protects him. And we find the four benefits in a gathering of ilm. We saw those ahadis. Now we come to the section where we see when a person becomes a scholar. When he becomes a scholar, then what is it that is different between a scholar and a non-scholar? Allah has answered this question in Surah Zumar, Surah 39. Verse number 9 by saying, Qul, tell them, Hal yastavil ladina ya'lamuna wal ladina la ya'lamun. Are those who know and those who don't know, are they alike? Are they alike? How do you think that they can be alike? They are not alike. Are those who know like those who don't know? So those who don't know, they don't know. So how are they like those who know? There is a very big difference. There is a very big difference. For example, if a person who has knowledge, he passes on the knowledge to the person who didn't know. And that person starts acting on the knowledge. So do you know, the person who passed on the knowledge, the Prophet said, Man dalla ala khayrin falahu ajru faili. The person who guides to the straight path, he gets a reward equal to the person who does it. So he has his own deeds. He also has a copy, a copy of the deeds of that person, what he did, because he showed him the way. So now even though that person also knows now, but yet he is not the same because he got to know from him. So subhanallah, my dear brothers and sisters, there are so many differences. Let us go ahead. Allah mentions in the Quran in Surah Mujadila, Surah number 58, verse number 11. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ Allah will raise high those who have Iman among you. Those who have Iman among you, Allah will raise them high. وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْإِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ And those who have been given it with knowledge, they will reach degrees, darajat. For them is positions. Subhanallah, my dear brothers and sisters, these are the positions which Allah has promised in the Quran. وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْإِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ The people who have been given ilm, they will reach these darajat, these positions, these degrees. So we should strive to reach that. See, people see billionaires, they see their lifestyle. Oh, he has a yacht, he has a big house, a palace. But I wish people would know how great it is to be a scholar. How great it is to be a person of knowledge. Allah has said, وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُ الْإِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Are they the same? No, they're not the same. They will get darajat. And if you think of it, the people of ilm are from those who have believed. They are from the amanu, those who have believed. Allah said, يَلْفَى اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ but from the Amanu, from the believers, Allah has significantly, specially mentioned this category of people of ilm. This shows their position. For example, Allah has mentioned in the Quran, Yama Yaqumu Ruh wal Malaika. The day a Ruh, Jibreel, will stand and the other angels will stand. Now, Jibreel is also an angel, but he has been separated from the rest of the angels and singled out that Jibreel and the other angels they will stand. We find a similar thing happening over here. When Allah especially singled out the people of ilm from the rest of the believers. So we find this is the second benefit of becoming a scholar. The third benefit. And this is a very beautiful benefit. It's mentioned in Surah Ankabut, Surah number 29. 
Verse number 43. وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ These examples I have given for people. وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ These are the examples which I have given for people. وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ But no one will understand them except those who have knowledge. So we find that the Quran is for everyone. But there are things and examples and there are beautiful things in the Quran which only people of knowledge are able to reach and which we can benefit from them by referring to people of knowledge. As Allah has taught us that فَسَلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. For example, the water of the well is for everyone. But the person who has more strength in his arms, he will be able to get more water out of the well because he has more strength. So the scholar is able to get more from the Quran, from the Hadith. He's able to understand and perceive and comprehend things in a more comprehensive way. And we know also that incomplete knowledge is dangerous. So we should take care of this, that we refer to people of knowledge. We refer to the scholars. So this is the third benefit of being a person of knowledge. The fourth benefit. It's a Hadith mentioned in Sunan Tirmidhi with authentic chain of narration. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ala inna dunya malunatun. Indeed, this world is cursed. And everything in this world is cursed. Illa, except Dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah. Wama walahu, everything which is connected with the remembrance of Allah. Except remembrance of Allah, everything which is connected with the remembrance of Allah. Wa alimun a mutalim, a scholar. Of Islam, a scholar, a mutalim, a student of knowledge. These four are saved from the curse in this dunya and everything in this dunya. My dear brothers and sisters, we find this dunya is a place of great deception. People fall under the deception of this dunya. This is the religion which people follow, worshipping the dunya. And this dunya makes so many people forget the purpose of life. Forget their Lord, forget the reality, forget the truth, only desires, following of desires. Except if you're connected with the remembrance of Allah. Nobody is stopping you from doing business. Do business, but don't forget Allah and do business. Nobody is stopping you from studies, from academics. Do, but don't forget Allah. Iqra, bismi rabbik. Read in the name of your Lord. And the most beneficial knowledge is the most important, which we all should seek knowledge. So my dear brothers and sisters, what we find is that this dunya is full of curse, which we should save ourselves. And to save ourselves, either, either be from the scholars or from the students of knowledge. Then we are saved from that curse. And this we all should be. This is compulsory for every single Muslim. My dear brothers and sisters, we have seen four obstacles. We have seen four reasons why we should seek knowledge. We have seen four benefits when we walk on the path of seeking knowledge. And we have seen four virtues and excellence of the people of knowledge. But finally, what are you going to do about it? We all have to intend and act. Start with a good intention and start with action as much as possible. And I invite you that you join us in this course. We are inshallah going to cover one subject every single week for this entire year inshallah. Subjects which are most important most of these subjects are formula level subjects. So we invite you to join us in this course, the Strong Foundation, an Islamic course. This is not only a program, it's a very important course. Also, make your own plan of action. Start reading the Quran with understanding. Get the Quran translation. Connect yourself with authentic Islamic lectures. Connect yourself with ways and means, authentic Islamic books. Start reading them, my dear brothers and sisters. And inshallah, walk step by step. I end this lecture with a hadith from our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which has been mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا الْإِلْمُ بِالتَّعْلُمْ Knowledge is acquired by studying. You won't get knowledge by just wishful thinking. You won't get knowledge by just having great feelings. This is not enough. We have to do something about it. We have to strive and struggle. We have to work for it. Then only we are going to get knowledge. So as we hear the story of someone they say he sat under a tree and he gained a lot of knowledge. This is not going to happen. Knowledge is something which comes by studying. Innamal ilmu bitalum. Study, my dear brothers and sisters. Get for yourself this goodness. This is the goodness 
which gives that raised high position. This is a goodness which makes the path to Jannah easy. This is the goodness which controls our desires. This is the goodness which brings for us the dua of all the creation who pray for forgiveness for the seeker of knowledge. This is the goodness which brings goodness and not dora, all goodness of this dunya and akhirah. We do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah make us understand the status and importance of seeking knowledge. May Allah make us of those who walk on the path of seeking knowledge and act on it. Ameen. Wa akhru dawana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. This series is sponsored by one of our brother in Islam for Sadqai Jariya of his family. Aise hi aur videos banane mein hamari madad karein. 